Hello everyone, welcome to episode 6. It's been a long journey and a lot of work has been done, but we are finally ready to put something into this tank. See those little guys right there? They are named Hide and Seek, and they are our bonded pair of snowflake clownfish waiting for us at the local fish store. They want to come home, so we need to get this tank cycled and ready for them. We were a little nervous and excited to finally see our tank come to life. Let us show you what we did. Which way is it? Huh? Is that Huh? So it's facing like this, or that? I'll figure out how to do this. Ooh la la! Perfect water level, too. We used our most cost saving purchase to date, the RODI unit, to create enough water to fill the sump and the display tank and then added salt mix and let it stir with the power head for about 24 hours. Mm. Gotta make sure we're calibrated right. Check out the fishies. Yeah, that's the top. In went the sand, which we did not rinse. Oops. We then let the tank cycle for a while before we could bring home our little guys. The first sign of diatoms were the tiny brown spots that appeared on the sand and then on the rocks. They became bigger over time and took over more space, and as they neared their end stage, tiny air bubbles could be seen. Okay, so we just have to share our fun. Oh, we do look purple. I look a little tasty. Um, so we just have to share our excitement over this uh, new <laughs> this new ball of algae that we got. Um, we got the grow light on it, and we set up a return pump for it. I mean, a little power head for it, and it looks awesome. Look at this. Let's turn you around. Turn around. <laughs> turn around. It's not working. <laughs> Can you see that? You see our little moving ball of algae? <laughs> we got a little return, I mean, power head in there, and our algae ball floating around. It keeps moving. And we got the grow light up in there. And it looks awesome. Oh, hi, Caitlin. Look, there's our usual cameraman. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Great. We could stare at this all day. I know. Who knew that this could be so entertaining? I mean, look at that. Look at that. It's spinning like a disco ball. We need music for it. Okay, never mind that. So now we have water, we have salt, we have filters, we have Catomorpha algae and a Kessel H380 grow light to manage nutrient export. We have heaters and an apex for making them behave. We have RODI for the top off. It's time for our pals to come home. We brought hide and seek home and acclimated them by floating them in their unopened bags for about 30 minutes. And then we did a water change acclimation period by removing about a quarter cup of water every 10 minutes or so and adding in another quarter cup from the tank. We did this until about 75% of the water was changed over, so it took about an hour, which was probably too long. Once we turned them loose in the tank, they hid out in the big cave for a short time, and then overnight they found their way to the hideout at the back of the tank that they have since claimed as their home. This is where they got their names from. Hyde is the female. She was very skittish and wouldn't let the male get too far away from her when they first went into the tank. She repeatedly shooed him back into hiding whenever he ventured too far for her liking. So his name became Seek. He always wants to push the boundaries a little. They stay pretty consistently in this area. I've never seen them leave the side of the tank since the night they went in and found their home. They only go about 12 inches in any direction from their rock, even during feeding time. So the end result was that we added fish to our beautiful new tank and we never get to see them. Hide and seek indeed.
So the sump looks nice and clean here, but it didn't stay that way for long. New tanks apparently go through lots of algae stages, and handling each one requires patience, water changes, and some luck. Thanks to the Kessel Grow Light in the sump, the majority of the algae that took hold in the tank was not in the display, but we did have a small hair algae outbreak followed by some cyano. Here's a rock that was moved from the sump to the display. You can see the huge difference in the amount and size of algae that was under the grow light versus what was in the main tank. Water changes helped the hair algae, and increasing the flow in the tank is helping keep the cyano at bay, although a small amount of it is still refusing to go away completely. I noticed that when I reduced the size of the Cato ball was when the first outbreak occurred. So far it hasn't been horrible, and we haven't had to do anything drastic. A cleanup crew was introduced to help, but that's in the next video. Now seriously, how does this happen? This is a floating <laughs> thermometer. <laughs> that snail is just floating on it. Like, come on, that is hilarious. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna get off of there? Did you think this one through? Do you wanna get off? 